Welcome to Explore Yellowstone Like a Local, home to the number one guidebook for Yellowstone and Grand Teton National Parks, home to the most downloaded podcast for Yellowstone and Grand Teton National Parks, and now home to some YouTube videos for Yellowstone and Grand Teton National Parks that are tied to the guidebook. And the way this works is in the guidebook, when you select one of the one day adventures in the guidebook, because we're breaking Yellowstone Park, the massive size of Yellowstone Park, down into one day adventures that you can do easily and enjoyably in one day. And today we are doing the South Loop. We're coming in from the west entrance. We're hitting Madison Junction, swinging up to Norris, Norris to Canyon, Canyon down to the lake. Lake to West Thumb, West Thumb back to Old Faithful, and that is the lower part. If you look closely, you can see that the there's two loops, and it's called the figure eight, and we're doing the lower half of the figure eight in Yellowstone Park today. And that chapter in the guidebook is cleverly called the South Loop, Canyon Waterfalls, Mud Volcanoes, and Yellowstone Lake. And today, we're going to gloss over all of those different podcasts in one video. There's a podcast that covers from the West Entrance Gate to Madison. There's a second podcast that covers the area from Madison Junction to Norris, and on then so on and so forth. Norris to Canyon, Canyon down to the lake, Lake to West Thumb is around the corner. Those are all individual podcasts that last about 45 minutes or so. And in those podcasts, I tell you guys some fun stories about the roads you're driving on and all that yada yada. When you get to the certain stops that are listed in the guidebook for you guys, like the canyon area, the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone, it's, it's a not to be missed on any trip to Yellowstone National Park because that's where Artist Point is, the brink of the Lower Falls, the brink of the Upper Falls, Lookout Point, Red Rock Point, all of these fabulous view areas right through here. When you get to that area, the podcast stops. The guidebook takes over and tells you where you're going first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, to stay ahead of the huge throngs of tourists that flock to this area. Besides Old Faithful and Grand and the Geyser area, the Canyon area is the second most popular stop in Yellowstone Park and you have to get, know where you're going in, in the correct order once you get to that area to stay ahead of the huge bus loads of tourists, the huge groups that the tour guides guide, and I know all of them. And a, we're going to have a great time in the canyon area, and nobody's going to be in front of us. We're going to have the whole thing to ourselves, and we're going to get out of there before anybody else shows up. Then we're going to go to the mud volcano where we're going to have the whole thing to ourselves. We're going to talk about the bison herds in, in the Hayden Valley, the largest free-roaming bison herd on planet earth and i really cover that in depth in the guidebook what happened to the bison and everything else and how sad that story really is then we're going to get down to fishing bridge and learn where i had my first job in my whole life when i was a wee tyke of about seven years old then we're going to cut around yellowstone lake hit the best view areas of yellowstone lake then we're going to swing back around stop at isa lake and then we're going to swing back up and complete the lower loop but in the guidebook, it tells you if you want some more information about the road you're driving on to listen to these separate podcasts. You don't have to. The guidebook gives you all the information you need to pull off a great day on the South Loop. But if you wanted some more information about what is on the road you're going to drive on, not what's in the guidebook, but what about on the road you're going to drive on. And so I can tell you guys some really fun stories about the road you're driving on as you're tooling through the park. That's what those podcasts are for. And that's what we're going to gloss over in this YouTube video. So let's get started. All right. I covered the section of road from the West Entrance Gate to Madison Junction in the YouTube video that kind of went from Madison Junction down to Old Faithful. So I already covered that there. So I'm not going to cover it again. But in the guidebook, I'll tell you which, how to get your pass before you get to the gate, what time you need to go through the gate to beat all the crowds, depending upon what time of year you're visiting, which lane you need to get in, and on and on and on. We cover the fires of 1988 that blew through here and opened up all the view lines into the park and everything else. And then we finally get to the story of the three brothers, which is in the guidebook, which is not to be missed on any trip to Yellowstone Park. The story of the three brothers is instrumental in getting Yellowstone Park named the world's first national park. And you'll only find that story in that guidebook. And then we hit Madison Junction. What we haven't gone over in a previous video is the rest of this. We're going to go talk about from Madison Junction to Norris next. So let's do that. 
and there's not a lot to see on this road, but there's a, you know, some interesting stories and I'm going to throw one in here real quick. I'm just following this car, 45, 50 miles an hour, beautiful morning, just, you know, a couple blocks behind this car and I just look out in front of me and this car just makes a dead right turn on a dead straightaway down the road right here, right before you get to Gibbon Falls. Off about a 30 foot embankment, the car just flies in the air, looks like a movie. I'm looking at the undercarriage of the car, the car just goes bombing through and breaks a bunch of trees, gets lodged in midair on this road. It's about six feet in the air. I pull over and stop, and this little Asian lady jumps out of the car and lands on the ground and comes up and starts shaking me by the shoulders. We got no insurance. We got no insurance. And it's like, man, have you got a driver's license? That's the first question I'd ask is how, who gave you the car? Which ended up being one of my good friends, Doug, who owns the Avis dealership in West Yellowstone. So anyway, it's a long story. I really go into depth about that in the in the podcast, Nor Madison Junction and Norris. So you're going to hear more about that funny story. You can hear it there. But golly. And then uh, once you get to Gibbon Falls, uh, you can go up to the Gibbon Falls parking lot and walk down and take a picture of Gibbon Falls with everybody else. Or you can do what I tell you guys to do in the guidebook. I tell you where to park and to be able to walk up and get to the base of Gibbon Falls to where you can take an unbelievable picture with your family standing with Gibbon Falls right at the back of you. I mean, you're not looking at Gibbon Falls with all the other people up here. You're in Gibbon Falls taking a picture of Gibbon Falls with water kind of half-ass pouring all over you. That's the cool stuff that's in the guidebook. And if it's a warm day, you guys can go swimming at the base of Gibbon Falls. The water coming off the falls is not cold. It's about 80, 85 degrees because of all the thermal activity upstream. But yeah, I get you guys into Gibbon Falls. Great swimming area, great picture spot, and a great fishing area. And I tell you all about that in the guidebook where you need to park, where the trail is, what you're going to encounter along the trail and everything. All of that's in the hiking chapter in the guidebook. And then once you get past Gibbon Falls, you'll kind of circle on up through there. And there are two really, really good hikes. And in fact, I can see what I consider one of the best off-trail hikes in all of Yellowstone Park is up through the Gibbon Meadows. And the Gibbon Meadows are right up here, kind of about two-thirds of the way up. And the Gibbon Meadows Geyser Basin hike is not going to be found on any other guidebooks out there. Uh, it took me years to figure out how to get back there to this area and uh, to get on the proper side of the Gibbon River so I didn't have to ford the river and da-da-da-da-da. But I get you back to some of the most incredible pools, geysers, and, and everything else you can't believe are back there. If, there. if there was a road back to this Gibbon Meadows Geyser Basin, there would be 10, 20, 30,000 people a day back there crowding in for that perfect selfie in, in front of some of these blue azure pools. It's unbelievable. And there, there's a pool back there called Evening Primrose Spring. That's a great picture in the guidebook that I bet less than 100 people have seen since the inception of the park. And I bet 50 of those have been in the last five years since I published my guidebook. It's an incredible area. But you got to know where you're going. You, there's no trails or anything else. I've got a map in the guidebook, hand-drawn map. I've got compass headings in the guidebook. To use. You can use the compass on your phone to figure out where you're going, where you're going to go first, second, third, fourth in that area back there to get to some really cool areas. It, it's some of the most beautiful pools in the world, but you have to know how to get back there. And I get you guys back to that area in the guidebook. And then right on up the road a little bit, there's another trail that's totally suitable for the smallest hiker in your group, but I cover that in the hiking chapter in the guidebook. And it's a very popular trail where there's hardly anybody gets back to the Given Meadow Geyser Basin. There, this trail is extremely popular, extremely well known. And I tell you when you should go on that trail to avoid all the crowds because it can be very, very, very crowded. But you guys can go there when I tell you guys go to and you have almost the whole thing to yourself. And then right up the road a little bit I, there for a new edition for the 2024 guidebook. And the 2024 guidebook is 20% longer, bigger than the 2023. I've really added some big things into the guidebook. I rewrote the entire hiking chapter and added a lot of stuff. It's a lot bigger guidebook than it was before. And then it, right up the road, there's a spot that is completely blocked from the trees. But... If you know where to park and where you're going and everything else, it used to be one of the most popular spots in the park. You'll see these two huge parking lots, and it looks like you're just parking next to the trees. 
but you're not. If you know where to park and you know where the trail is and everything else, in 50 feet, I can get you to some of the most beautiful falls and most amazing rock formations found anywhere in Yellowstone Park. But you have to know where to park and you have to know where the trail is. And I've got that information in the guidebook for you. And then you'll end up at Norris. And in the guidebook and in that podcast, Madison Junction and Norris, I explain that Norris is, is a pretty much of a dud, you guys. It, it really, really is. Norris is about a, a two out of a 10 at best, whereas everything that we're heading to, to in the canyon area is a 12 out of 10. It's just unbelievable not to be missed. Norris is a, if, unless you've got weeks to spend in Yellowstone Park and you've seen everything else about three or four times, then go see Norris. Norris is a dud. It's about a two out of a 10. Don't waste your time with Norris unless you've been in Yellowstone Park dozens of times and seen everything dozens of times, all the cool stuff dozens of times. Then go pay Norris a visit. But I can't cover that in the guidebook. I'm trying to take the best advantage of your time and not send you to duds in Yellowstone Park. So, And then from Norris, the canyon, again, there's not a lot to see. I tell you guys to take the uh, Cascade Drive and everything over here. The Virginia Cascade Drive's really pretty. It's really worth this one-way loop road. It's only a couple places to be able to get out and take a picture because it's so narrow and it's right on a cliff. I say in the guidebook, anybody that's got a fear of heights, make sure they're on that passenger side of that car because those wheels are that far from going down about a 3,000-foot cliff. It's real. <laughs> People that have a fear of heights are really get freaked out. Uh, trust me, I've been down that road with somebody who's got a fear of heights and they don't like sitting on the right side of that car. So, and it'll dump you back out on the road. And then there are three really good hikes right here that are totally suitable for small kids again. I've got 21 hikes, day hikes in the guidebook that are totally suitable for small kids. And these are three of them. And I get you to an area, a couple areas that are really pretty that very few people see. I get you to the upper called the Little Gibbon Waterfalls. And there, there's some really cool stuff in there in the guidebook that really gets you guys to some areas. And you'll hike up there to the Little Gibbon Falls and there won't be anybody there, but your little son or daughter that will think they conquered Mount Everest when they get back there. It's really cool. And that's some of the really neat hikes I get you guys to in the guidebook. And this little midway area is one of those hikes. And then we kind of swing on around. You'll see a trailhead for Greb Lake and Greb Lake is nothing to see. However, it is the headwaters for the Gibbon River that we've been talking about going through here. And the Gibbon River comes flying down through here from Greb Lake, meets up with the fire hole, makes the Madison. Madison swings around, gets into the Mississippi, Missouri, and then the Missouri gets into the Mississippi, making this giant curly cue around the United States and dumping back out by New Orleans, making it the longest continuous river in the United States you history buffs out there, you people that like statistics, you know, fun fact. And so, but you'll continue on down. And then right when you start to get down to the Canyon Village, it's a really good place to start seeing animals. And you'll start seeing moose, which are really hard to find in Yellowstone Park. They're easy to find down in Grand Teton, but they're tough to find in Yellowstone. But there's a great place to see moose. I cover a great hike where you guys can go hiking back with your kids, what time of day you need to be there. And I swear these moose look like they just got let out of, of a pen. And I'm telling you, it's really cool. And I, there's even some, some campsites back there. And I tell you which ones you need to get to get to where these moose kind of come out at night over here. And then you get to the Canyon Village. And this is where the, the video and these podcasts stop. And the guidebook takes over because you've just, you we're just talking about the road you're driving on getting to these adventures. And on the South Loop, there are four adventures we're going to stop at through here. And the first is the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone. And the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone is not to be missed. And like I mentioned earlier, I'm going to tell you guys where to go first. And then I'm going to tell you some really cool stories about that area you're visiting. And then I'm going to tell you where to go second. I'm going to tell you some more cool stories about where you're that, that second stop. Then the third stop, fourth stop, fifth stop. I'm going to tell you how Artist Point is not really where Thomas Moran painted his world famous painting, half finished painting from of the lower falls looking back up the canyon. Or even though it's named Artist Point and the Thomas Brand bench is in that area, and I tell you where the Thomas Brand bench is because there's a great picture on our website and in our guidebook about that. That is not where he painted the world famous painting from. 
it is at a different spot in the canyon area and I get you to that spot. And so we take about two hours staying ahead of those tens upon thousands of people that are right on our ass. They're about 15, 20 minutes behind us. But I get you guys there where you have the whole place to yourself. I'll throw in a quick story here for you guys. Um, I was there in June of 2023, got to the canyon area just at the same time I tell you guys to do. And I walk up on the artist viewing artist platform, the viewing area looks back over to the canyon, the canyon area and the lower falls down through there. And there's two people up there, a couple, a young couple. And I'm sitting there looking around and looking at, just looking at the falls and everything, enjoying the whole thing. And there's nobody up there except the three of us. This girl kind of glances over at me and she goes, you're Teddy Garland, aren't you? And I said, yes, I am. And she goes, I would have never believed it. And I go, what? And she goes, I would have never believed that you could get me on this platform and have us be the only people up here. She goes, I've been to Yellowstone Park for 20 years. I've been on this platform 30 times with 100 people just crowding in, jostling in, waiting their turn for that perfect picture of from Artist Point looking back in the canyon and the lower falls down there. And I said, well, here we are. And a boyfriend spins around and he goes, hey, man, you're the guy we've been listening to on all his podcasts, man. It's great. You're really funny. And I said, well, thanks, man. So she goes, I wouldn't have believed it. She goes, but here we are. Like my old man used to say, the proof's in the pudding, man. And I get you to those spots at the right time of day, too. See the sunbeam shooting down the canyon. You got the whole thing to yourself. I mean, it's just magical. It's a magical spot. And then I get you to the next spot, the third spot, fourth, fifth, sixth. And in about an hour and a half or two hours, we're done. I tell you to go to the Canyon Visitor Center. And what you're going to find in that Canyon Visitor Center, the rest of the Visitor Center in Yellowstone Park suck. They're not worth your time. But that Canyon Visitor Center's got a flat ass going on. And I tell you what you're going to find in there in that guidebook. It is top notch. And so we leave the canyon area. And there's a podcast, Canyon Down to the Lake. And so we kind of cover everything in detail in that canyon area. And the first thing we cover is guy baited a bear over there from Bozeman, a photographer from Bozeman. He gets his face ripped off by this bear after he baits this bear a few years ago. And then I tell the story about these three girls that baited a bear over to their car with a sandwich and the bear had to get shot. I tell you guys some fun stories in that podcast coming from Canyon Village. And those stories aren't in the guidebook. It's just stories I'm telling you guys on the road you're driving down through here. And then I also get into the story of the Yellowstone bison. And I really get into depth about this in the guidebook, about how there was 40 million bison covering the United States from the border of Mexico all the way to Canada, from the East Coast to the West Coast. The bison were, were everywhere, just absolutely everywhere in the United States. And because of fashion in Europe and in New York of wanting the pelts and all this stuff, they got hunted down to approximately 100 animals in just over 20 years. It's just an amazing, a near annihilation of a species. And um, it's really, really sad, but I really get into the depth about all that stuff. I'll tell you guys an interesting story. The, a guy from the Smithsonian wanted to go find some bison, and he was just north of Yellowstone Park in what would become Montana. And he was up there, got off the train, and was looking for bison. And they said, you know, you're, you're about a year or two too late. And he, remember, he makes the quote, he got off the train and he looked out across the open meadows for 100 miles. And he said, you couldn't walk a straight line for 20 feet for 100 miles because you had to weave your way around all the carcasses. That's how many dead bison littered the ground for as far as you could see and as far as you could walk in a week. He said you could not walk a straight line because the carcasses were so thick on the ground. It, it was absolutely an amazing destruction of an animal. And you guys got to remember, the, uh, the Yellowstone bison is, is the American bison. There are no more bison found anywhere else on planet Earth. It is our animal. That It is our animal. It is the United States of America's animal. They are not found anywhere else on earth, just the United States. And we were stupid enough to get hunted down to less than 100 animals. But I tell the story how 28, 
28 bison wandered into the Yellowstone area and then Yellowstone was named a national park right about the same time and they became protected. And what you see as you're driving through the Hayden Valley right here, they all migrate up and they kind of hang out right here in the Hayden Valley. And you'll see all these bison through here. That's the largest free roaming bison herd on earth. It's really cool. And I really get into a lot more depth about it. You can pull over at one of the pullouts and see hundreds, if not a thousand bison through there and pull over and read the story of the American bison to everybody in your group. I mean, you'll have people with tears running down their cheeks. It is a really good, sad story about greed and how, how stupid we can be at times. So anyway, and this is also a great place to see grizzly bears, but only in the spring months. We're going to get into where you kind of hunt bears on the North Loop all summer long, but in the spring months of late May and into June a little bit, this is a great place to see grizzly bears. So we continue on down through there. And again, all of that stuff's in the guidebook for you guys. We continue on down through there. And the next stop in the guidebook is the Mud Volcano area, which is really, really worth a stop. This is a fantastic area. And I tell you where you're going to go first, second, third, fourth in the Mud Volcano area. And you, what you're going to see and how these lakes work. And it, it's really a fantastic area. And I cover this area in the guidebook that was... And this is 2024. In 2015, was a forest of trees. And in less than five years, the ground has gotten so hot, it burned up all the roots of this entire forest of trees. And you walk right through it, and all you see is dead trees laying on the ground. But when I was back there in 15 years ago, you're walking through a forest of trees. Now it's gone. I'm telling you, the ground got so hot, it literally cooked about a football field of a forest of trees right in front of your eyes. It's amazing. It's a really cool spot. But again, I go over all that stuff in the guidebook, Dragon's Mouth Cauldron, how you can scare the kids, no, 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 all that stuff with the mud volcano area. So the pot, we pick back up and we get to the lake area right over here. And I tell you where you're going in the lake area. I tell you where you guys can have the best food in all of Yellowstone Park with white linen tablecloths, a well-trained staff and everything else. And if they happen to be closed, in the main restaurant. I tell you guys how you guys can get additional food over there. There's a deli in this same little hotel and you can go out there and sit in these this giant veranda. There's a guy playing, playing a white Steinway piano out there playing classical music and you're sitting out on these big cushy chairs looking out over Yellowstone Lake and you can see all the way down to the Teton Range from where you're sitting right through there. It's an amazing spot, but I can, you know, I go into that where what you're looking at, where you're going and everything else in the guidebook. And then we also kind of swing over and we cover the edge of Yellowstone Lake over here. And I tell you guys, a great place to go hot potting over here. A great place to go swimming in Yellowstone Lake because there's some hot pots that pour their water into the frigid waters of Yellowstone Lake. When I'm up there in May and June, even up till the middle of June, Yellowstone Lake's frozen solid. It's an absolute sheet of ice. It, it has water where you can actually see the water and not ice for about four months out of the year, eight months out of the year. It's frozen solid. It's amazing. That's how the winters are very, very, very long in Yellowstone and the summers are very, very, very short. Yeah, Yellowstone Lake's really cool. But in the swimming and hot potting chapter in the guidebook, I get you guys to a place where mom can go hang out on a black sand beach. Kids can frolic around in the water and create a little hot pot and they can go swimming in the, in the warm waters of Yellowstone Lake because there's geysers pouring in hot water right there. It's really cool. There's some neat stuff in that guidebook that, you know, no, you're not going to find anywhere else in any other guidebook out there. And then we pick back up and I tell you which stops to make and not make on the Yellowstone Lake down through here. Tell you guys where you guys can rent a boat and get out on Yellowstone Lake and a boat that's capable of handing, handling the winds that come up on Yellowstone Lake about lunchtime and on. There are always some big winds come up. And, but it, I tell you guys that, that we're to rent a fully capable boat that'll tolerate any waves that come up there. And you can go to Stevens Island, Dodd Island, and Frank Island and visit these. And I tell you a real interesting story about Dodd Island, how this crazy concessionaire back in the 1900s hauled a bunch of Indians out there and a bunch of elk and bison and all this stuff and tried to put on shows. And then the first summer is boat sinks and everything else. You know, all the animals swim to shore and 
you know, but you can still go find arrowheads and stuff out on Dodd Island. And I tell you about all that stuff in the guidebook. And then you guys can drive your boat over here to the West Thumb Basin because there's a really cool, one of the best geyser basins in all of Yellowstone Park is located just north of the West Thumb Geyser Basin, which has foot trails around it. But you, there is no foot trails to this northern geyser basin that's just at the top of the West Thumb Geyser Basin area. But you can see them all from both really cool it's really fantastic and i tell you guys how you can launch a canoe or a kayak over here and go over and see all this stuff safely and easily so but all that's covered in the guidebook there's an entire boating chapter in the guidebook about how to do all that fun stuff out on yellowstone lake and then we're going to stop at pumice point and a lot of people go you know my wife was going why are we stopping at pumice point it just looks like there's a pile of rocks out there in the water and everything else but in the guidebook i describe where those rocks came from and what used to sit out in front of you, and Pumice Point is right down here on this little corner right here is West Thumb. Here's the main part of Yellowstone Lake. And I tell you how Pumice Point was instrumental in this entire West Thumb area becoming a lake. And it's really fantastic story. If you know what Pumice Point is, and you know where the rocks you can go out and sit on and take a picture with the Grand Teton Range right in the background behind you, Pumice Point becomes a really cool stop and it becomes a fantastic stop on everybody's Yellowstone Park vacation. And a lot of you guys say, you know, man, we would have blown right by it if you hadn't been in that guidebook, but it ended up being one of the best stops of our Yellowstone vacation. It's really, really cool. You know what Pumice Point is, like I've got it in the guidebook for you guys, Pumice Point's a badass. And then we get to West Thumb and West Thumb sucks. West Thumb's no good. You know, West Thumb's about like Norris. It, there's, if, if you've seen everything in Yellowstone Park 10 times, the really cool stuff, then you, know, you want to go walk around West Thumb. West Thumb's a dud. I mean, the worst thing at Old Faithful is better than the best thing at West Thumb. So, you know, I, you we're doing the South Loop. We're going to swing past West, West Thumb. If you guys want to stop at West Thumb, you can, but I'm telling you, it's a dud. We cross over Isa Lake, we swing up through here. I'll also tell you where the forest is, the knotty pine forest, that twisted crazy wood. And there's a knotty pine forest. There's no markers or anything else. I just know where it is. And I tell you guys where it is in the guidebook. So you can kind of look for it as you're driving down the road. And I kind of tell you where that knotty pine forest is after you leave West Thumb. I also get you guys to stop as you're climbing the hill away from Yellowstone Lake and everything else. I get you guys to pull over at a really cool pullout. And you can pull out and see east over the, the entire Yellowstone Lake to the Absorca Range. The Absorca Range, you can kind of see that it says it right here, the Absorca Range over here. And it's outside the caldera. The caldera swings right through here. You barely see this shaded line. That's the caldera edge. That's where the volcano sat above the center of Yellowstone Park. And the Absorca Range is over here. So you can pull out right here, take a picture across Yellowstone Lake, back at the Absorca Range. And these are huge mountain peaks. I mean, they're as darn near as high as the Tetons are. Snow-capped and covered all summer long, basically. And you can see this huge mountain range back over here and go, wow. And that is the eastern edge of Yellowstone Park. And you're parked and standing in the middle of Yellowstone Park. 30 miles that way, 30 miles back over here to the western edge. It, you know, it gets you get to see, it's hard to, you know, really grasp how big Yellowstone Park is. But from the spot I get you guys to, you can really grasp how big Yellowstone Park really is from that one spot. All right, so we swing past through there. We go to Little Isa Lake. And Isa Lake's really interesting. It was one of my mom's favorite things when she was going through Yellowstone Park. Because Isa Lake sits right on top of the Continental Divide. The Continental Divide kind of swings right through here. Crosses right over the road a couple times. And one time it crosses over Isa Lake. And Isa Lake's about probably as big as your house. It's not very big at all. It's as big as my house, I guess. And, but Isa Lake sits right on the Continental Divide. And if you go look at one end, there'll be a little trickle of water coming out and going east. And you go look at the other end, there'll be a little trickle of water going out west, especially after it rains. It's the only lake in the United States that sits both on the Continental Divide and feeds both the Atlantic and the Pacific. It's really cool. It's got lily pads all over it. It's really, really pretty. You don't have to stop. There's a really old, cool little wooden bridge. You can drive right over and take a picture. And I tell you guys, I've seen more than once 
I've seen some people up there kind of at the crest with their pants down trying to get their pee to go down either side. I've see, seen that more than once, and I promise you, if my mother had been alive and seen that, she would have stopped the car right in the middle of the road and gone out and given those boys a piece of their, her mind, I promise you. So, but Isa Lake's right there. And so once you guys have done everything at the canyon area, seen the bison, stopped at the mud volcano, done everything I tell you guys to do along Yellowstone Lake, and then swinging back over, made your last little stop at Isa Lake, it's getting to be about three or four o'clock. And remember, you want to beat all the cars back out. All these 10,000 cars that are all over the lake come back out. But you can make one last stop at Old Faithful. And I tell this story in the guidebook that I was doing the South Loop one time, and I stopped at Old Faithful to use the restrooms. And I just pulled over to use restrooms, and I looked over there, and I saw the indicator cone for Beehive going off. I go, wow, man, Beehive's going to go off. So I go over there and watch Beehive erupt. I turn around behind me, and Old Faithful's going off behind me. Then I look down the road a little bit, and Castle's going off. So I said, crap, I'll walk over there and watch Castle go off real quick. And then I was sitting there, and then somebody goes, hey, man, Grand's getting ready to go off. So I walked over there and watched Grand erupt, the largest geyser on planet Earth. I mean, I caught four geysers in about 20 minutes, and I just stopped to use the bathroom. So it's worth the stop to stop at Old Faithful just to see what's going on. And with that, we kind of have completed the entire South Loop. You know, we covered the road from Madison Junction in depth in a separate video, and we cover that in different podcasts, so I'm not going to get it rare. But you're just going to swing back up, hit Madison Junction, and then go back out and go to your place in West Yellowstone. So, And with that, we have covered what is called the South Loop chapter in the guidebook, and it's called Canyon Waterfalls, Mud Volcanoes, and Yellowstone Lake, and it takes one day to do all that, and we kind of glossed over all that in this video. So. All right, you guys have a great time on your Yellowstone Park vacation. And remember, you guys can get your guidebook. Just go to our website, exploreyellowstonelikealocal.com, and you can pick up an electronic copy for only 12 bucks or a paperback copy for only 25 bucks. But remember, we only print off 1,000 paperback copies, and we sold out around August 10th in 2023. So we will sell out again in the 2024 season. So if you want a paperback copy then you better get it ordered now and i write a personal note to everyone who buys one and throw in a cool yellowstone sticker as well so everybody have a great time i'll see you guys on the south loop i'll see you at artist point and i'll see all the other cool stops i get there and we're going to have them all to ourselves i promise you let's go see you bye